So now that we've talked about the motivation for the builder pattern and we've given an overview of its structure and functionality, let's take a look at how you could actually implement this pattern in C++ using, of course, our expression tree processing app case study to guide the discussion. So there's a method called build expression tree that's part of the post order interpreter and that's used to build a composite expression tree from the parse tree built by the interpreter in the build parse tree phase. And you can see here kind of how it works. This is just a little snippet of code. We'll take a more systematic look at the source code here in just a minute. But uh, in post order interpreter, we inherit from iterate interpreter impl, and that means we are obliged to override the build expression tree method, which as you can see, takes the root of the parse tree called parse tree, uh, which is a pointer to an expert. So that's the root of the tree. And then what happens is we go ahead and we say, hey, parse tree, please start building yourself. And as it turns out, this call actually triggers a whole series of recursive invocations, but this is where it starts. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and build the composite hierarchy corresponding to the parse tree. So we have an expression tree composite built from this. And then what we get back from the build will be essentially a component node pointer. And then we pass that to the expression tree constructor, which will then wrap the expression tree abstraction around the underlying composite expression tree or expression tree nodes, I guess is a better way to put it. So this whole thing will be done recursively. And we'll take a look in a second at some of the recursion that takes place here. So what's gonna happen as you can see, let's just kind of start at the root of this thing. If we were to pass in a parse tree, which we see on the right-hand side for the expression minus five times three plus four, which we use over and over again to kind of make the, the case in as tangible and concrete way as possible. We're gonna start out with the root, which would in this case be an expert pointer that points to a multiply expert node. And you can see that a multiply expert node, when its build method is called, will go ahead and create a new composite multiply node where the left and the right children of the composite multiply node are based on what's returned from left expert arrow build and right arrow expert build. I'm oh, sorry, right expert arrow build, yeah. So we have left expert arrow build and right expert arrow build. Both of those things will then recursively go down through the parse tree calling build, which then will call other methods that will build the corresponding expression tree elements. So we're starting at the root, and now we're gonna go ahead and descend down one level to the right child and see what happens there. That, that's the add expert. And you can see what happens here is that this is an add expert node, which also in, is an inheritance from binary expert. It's got a build hook method, and this build hook method creates a composite add node and the elements that are passed into the constructor of composite add node, of course, are left expert arrow build and right expert arrow build. So that again, recursively calls build, which will then descend even further as we'll see in a moment. As you can see, what happens is this comes back as a component node pointer, and that's just using the magic of inheritance and dynamic binding to do our bidding. Going down yet further, we would end up at the leaves of the tree where we have these num experts, so when a number expert is hit, that's also inherits from expert. It's got a build method. And in this case, that build method goes ahead and makes a leaf node with the item passed in, the item being the value that's part of that number expert. So you can see that that's kind of the, the base case of the recursion, and then it'll pop back out, giving the left and right expert results, which in that case would be pointing to num experts. That'll be created as part of a composite add node. And then that would of course pop back out and those uh, negate expert, which would end up translating into the uh, negate node, the composite negate node in the composite expression tree and composite multiply node in the composite expression tree, that'll get passed back as the result of build here. Notice how everything comes back as a component node pointer. And that's again, just the magic of object-oriented programming and, and inheritance. So that's just kind of showing you how the build process works recursively to kick things off and we end up creating a composite expression tree when we're all done. So now that we've kind of walked through the implementation of the high level, let's actually go take a look at the source code to get the ground truth. You can see here is the build expression tree method we were just talking about where it says parse tree arrow build and that kicks all the pieces in motion. If we go up to the expert.h file, you'll see that there's a build method defined in the expert abstract base class. 
And then all the various concrete classes below, like number expert has a build method that overrides the one in the abstract base class. Subtract expert has a build method. Add expert has a build method. They all have build methods, as you can see here. And if we actually go over and look at the build methods, they all do very, very simple things. They all go ahead and return the corresponding object that is related to what the parse tree class does. So if we have number expert, when we call the build method, as you can see, it returns the leaf node here. Uh, likewise, negate expert returns a composite negate node. Likewise, add expert returns composite add node. And each step along the way, it's calling the build methods recursively on the parse tree to go ahead and generate the elements of the expression tree. And that's why we talk about builder as building a complex object, like a complete composite expression tree out of each of the parts individually. And so if you look at this, you can see each thing is very straightforward. They, it's kind of paint by numbers, if you will. But the cool part is that the pattern is what's giving us the guidance on how to name the method, how to arrange the inheritance hierarchy, and then how to set the wheels in motion back over here in the interpreter impl class with the build expression tree method. So this gives you a nice idea of how to implement Builder. It's actually a very simple pattern to apply. What makes it appear daunting at first is just the fact that there's a lot of classes. And we'll talk about that when we wrap up with the other considerations here in just a moment.